Hello Polygoners! Welcome to another daily cast. We've got an exciting new ZVT for you tonight. It's going to be on an Odyssey Ladder Edition here on the bottom right hand side. In the red zerg trunks, playing for Team Liquid, it's none other than our man Snoot! And he is going for very standard hatch gas pool opener. His opponent on the top left hand side in his favorite color, the pink Terran. He plays for Team Rival Gaming now, but he is a former member of Polygon Gaming and still critical to our event staff. It's disrespect. This guy is a sick player. He is very dedicated, very committed. Still in high school, this guy has grown so much in the year and a half that I have known him. He used to be, you know, just like every other Masters player, but now he's facing up against Snoot. Oh my god, Snoot! I really don't expect him to win this game, but I imagine it's going to be a learning experience both for him and for us. I'm actually really excited. I haven't seen that much of this game. I saw a little bit. I saw it was disrespect. Honestly, that was all I needed to know to know that I was going to cast this game. Anyway, his opponent is going for Metabolic Boost Queens. This is completely standard out of him. Uh, whereas disrespect, going for a little bit of a greedier command center. And uh, then going for his uh, his second barrack. So this looking like you know two one one opener. That's one of his favorite openers. He's very very good at. It. He's beaten me many times with this opener. The greedy low command center is very typical for him. Usually his style of, um, alternates between two different things. Either extreme cheese, like we're talking three racks reaper, nine racks reaper, like all kinds of crazy stuff. This guy is really an absolute cheeser. But after getting lectured at Polygon Gaming so often about spend your money, spend your money, spend your money, he's actually doing a really good job spending his money in this game. And it's phenomenal to see he has become such a good player, already sniping this overlord and the 2 one one like I said, is one of his favorite styles because even when he's cheesing, drops are one of the things he loves to do best. And the multitasking associated with drop styles, ooh, canceling that, interesting, I guess because the Overlord uh, maybe possibly saw it, I'm not, let, let's, yep, yep, maybe saw it going down and now he's going to try and do something different. Not really sure, but hit, canceling the starport does mean, well, it means it's not 2 one one anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> So at this point, Snoot is definitely thinking some kind of factory. Disrespect has done a good job uh, at least tricking this Overlord. So what we're seeing right now is a Carapace upgrade for the Lings, and this is going to indicate that he doesn't know whether or not it is going to be a, a, a bio style play, but then seeing the two Ebays right here at the front definitely reveals that with the Lings. So at that moment, he starts plus one as opposed to perhaps going for plus one ranged and doing some kind of Hydra Ultra style perhaps, or you know, there's a lot of combinations thereof. In any case, we do have a lot of queens in production because of the factory scout that was to deal with Hellions, but again, Hellions, not really something Disrespect likes all too much. He really loves his, uh, his marine play, and right now he's coming around trying to kill off a little bit of this creep with just a little forward scout, but he's gotta be very, very careful. He knows his opponent is lurking around nearby he's running a little bit too deep onto the creep this is actually pretty scary but there's no air here to punish him just yet just a lot of queens but forced to use a stem back to get out of there one of his uh medevacs a little critically low on energy but they should both be okay carap is going to be completing here in just a few moments and a third base has completed for disrespect who's also getting his one one upgrades which will be completing here in a few moments. He may be waiting for that before continuing this aggression. But either way, having these Marines and Medivacs out in a forward location means Liquid Snoot's Queens and perhaps even his Lings will be on the Zerg side of the map, forcing Snoot into a defensive position. But that's usually just fine with a Zerg. And here we go, Disrespect moving out onto the creep. Probably going to see a scan. Still no scan just yet, but he's playing very, very greedy, but killing off a couple of tumors. And now he does have the 1-1 upgrades. Starting to produce some Widow Mines, 
but we've got plus two carapace on the way right now and as well as baneling speed and of course the lings and the queen's going to be dr knocking back these meta bags knocking <laughs> dropping a one marine there i guess he was a little bit worried about banelings but there's just none of those on the map just yet snoot choosing to defend mostly with a mineral heavy army lings and queens although we do see the spire on the way we also have the baneling speed so we will eventually get to some gas units just trying to steamroll his economy as good as possible and at 75 workers it's as good as it's going to get you don't really want to go much over this maybe up to 84 but uh, that's really getting into higher level tech, much more gas consumption heavy styles. And I think right now he's just going to want to power his army and uh, do some kind of explosive mid game. 32 lings are on the way. And uh, this this gold base looking pretty darn safe with uh, like seven queens here to defend it. So at this point, we see Disrespect more on his side of the map. Uh, he does have a slight army lead, but a bit behind in workers. He's going to want to get this third base up and running. So really, this army here is to swing in here if need be, or swing up here. Now, these Widow's Mines are definitely out of position. He's going to want to get those burrowed and spread out quite a bit. We'll uh, see, because there's a Ling Baneling army coming right at him. Uh, go ahead, pick up there. Boom. No, uh, no... Spire units just yet, about to be completing now. Seven of them, seven mutilisks that is. And uh, here we go, we are actually seeing the first engagement. Some halfway decent splits on the mines, but uh, Snoop did see where those mines were buried and they are pretty well grouped together. So if he can do some good splitting, and it looks like he has this, see this left flank? This left flank of Lings right here? It's absorbing all these Widow Mine shots. So rather than losing this whole group of units, he split here, he split here, he split here. You guys can totally see this basic kind of split uh, in multiple different lo locations on our channel. But if you click the I in the top right hand corner of this video, you can actually see exactly how to do this. It's very quick, very easy, and honestly very, very good to do as you're about to see. Boom! All those Widow Mine shots. This army, which was held in reserve, now flooding in with no AoE to defend this. All these Marines are going to get overwhelmed by the Ling Baneling numbers. And even the Banelings are going to be rolling in here and uh, trying to do a little bit of the damage to the SCVs, but a little bit sloppy. Um, but he does take out these four Widow Mines and even this fifth one taking some splash damage over there. So I want to back this replay up just so you guys can see that one more time to see the really the power of such an awesome split and how it makes all the difference in this game so we'll fast forward just a little bit we see this forward zergling the reason this is forward is to get any widow mines to proc that are already set up he sees none so he pulls back just to not die to these marines he doesn't quite see the widow mines just yet now he sees the widow mines he still sees they're up the moment he sees a burrow he pulls back okay that's a huge moment right there all right and we're all the way back he wants to reorganize his army he's going to clean up anything here he knows there's no widow mines forward but again he's only got one overseer here he doesn't really have time to make another one there's not one nearby like the closest one's probably this one right here and it's just going to take too much time it's in a bad position to to become an overseer so he's flirting a little bit with the widow mines here but very very careful to go ahead and split because he sent his whole 1a here and then he peeled this off okay you can actually see the little red circles here this was just like boom right there he knew exactly where it was and he is actually targeting it you can see boom boom his entire goal right here is to use this to activate all of those mines and because they're grouped disrespect would have been much much better to split them because they are grouped this is going to work this is still a great tactic but it gets much harder if they're uh well spread widow mines these are not well spread widow mines so liquid snoot tasting the blood in the water and then going for the bite boom just that simple guys
at this point, Snoot has really broken the marine count of disrespect. And because of that, he's free to really start flying all over the map in massing the the mutalisks. Had he not been able to break that, he, we would see him committing a little bit more to the ground forces. But disrespect, because he went so heavy on marine count, he's probably not got missile turrets up. Um, probably doesn't have the widow mines because we saw those get taken out. There are some uh, coming forward now, but they were really in this location over here to defend both spots. And that means the mutalisks can just come in until the army shows up. When the army shows up, flies right on around and uh, begins looking for another location. Of course, sees the missile turret about to be finishing, so he's going to want to swing in here with his lings as well. And because he's already pulled the widow mines over here, the marines were pulled over here to deal with the, uh, the mutalisks. But he didn't want to uproot the mines because, you know, of course, mines in transit are the weakest. Lings were hoping, you know, by flooding up into the ramp, to catch the mines on their way over. It's okay, though, because this small little group of lings is dealing with the entire army of disrespect. While the economy of disrespect is about to get trashed. Here we go, Snoot coming in here, and definitely tearing apart what little army disrespect has left, and uh, because those widow mines were not in position, that is pretty much going to be the end of this game. Really, playing against Terran all comes down to area of effect damage. The Marines can only attack one unit, and they attack really fast, and they can target down single individual units very well. But Zerg is not about the single individual unit, it's about the swarm, which is why tanks, widow mines, liberators, things that ultimately end up being AoE, are so effective for Terran in this matchup. But they're also hard to utilize in a tactical sense. So what the Zerg wants to do is to disrupt the tactics, create a weakness through that disruption, and then kill while the Terran is getting his uh, his bearing straight. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. If you like this content, make sure you smash that like button, smash the subscribe button as well if you have not already. Please visit us on Patreon. Link is in the description. One dollar will begin earning you Patreon rewards. Check out that page for more information. Shout out my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.